I sacrificed a USB mouse yesterday. Hopefully that will rid us of our technology. I had to throw out a scanner today. What? I have this stuff, this residual scanning things I need to do. And I have like a little flatbed scanner that I've been using for years. It's great. It just won't turn on. There's nothing to do with it. You can't, there's no power button. There's no, you can't, there's no troubleshooting. You can try a different cable, I guess. But I mean, it's just dead. So that's it. Yeah. Okay. What happened to your mouse? I just sacrificed it so that we could get rid of the tech demons that ruined yesterday's show. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Mine was more inadvertent. Uh, it's going to be a reckoning here with the hardware. My daughter came home with a laptop that doesn't work anymore. You know, I did brand new. Just got it. At least it's hereditary. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the curse. <laughs> you might want to go into something that doesn't involve technology. How do you feel about becoming an Amish person? Yeah. I know. Everything I touch. You're like the anti Midas. <laughs> That's exactly what I am. Yeah. Everything you touch turns to rest. Sodom. That's probably another name for the devil in some culture. Anyway, <clears throat> how are we doing? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a Tuesday of a holiday week. I just dropped the car off at the yield dealership, my wife's car, to get the oil changed, tires rotated. And there was a recall mm. for the mm. parking brake cable, which apparently. As you might expect, is somewhat important, but not important enough to. Yeah, like, they're just to tell anybody your free about will. it. <laughs> well, it does. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I, I think if it um, was engaged when you were driving, maybe that would be a serious issue. But just don't park on any hills. You know? Yeah, which is a problem because our high, our driveway is in fact a hill yeah. that you can go sledding down if you really right. like. If you're small, our, enough. our driveway is actually a black diamond. Um, black diamond. There's moguls at the bottom. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there. <laughs> we've had trucks get stuck at the bottom of it. It's not good. Actually, my wife's car usually struggles to. Get, I can't figure this out. My wife's, my wife's had two different cars. Since we've lived here. Neither one mm -hmm. can get up the driveway. Now they've both been front wheel drive, but they put. I, I don't know. It's not like Mount Everest. It's like but, a like a running start issue. You gotta gun well, the, the engine. The problem with the running start issue is that at the end of where you need to be is the garage, so you can't go in with any momentum. <laughs> The way I uh, met my neighbors here was there was this giant flatbed truck of some kind. I can't remember for the life of me what it was delivering. It was some. It wasn't our like moving stuff because we. I don't remember what it was, but it was something related to moving. But maybe it was just bringing a dumpster or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But it was this really long thing, and so there's like this little dip, and then the hill goes up really steep, mm -hmm. and the truck got. <laughs> it literally got stuck. Like you know, it, we couldn't move forward. So all, I had the sight of all my neighbors come over and like sagely mock me and the company <laughs> then offer useless advice about how they were going to get this thing up the hill crazy anyway looks like amazon well actually there's like two major court things that came out there's the mm -hmm. amazon and the eu is now right. going to treat third-party sellers on its platform a little bit more fairly uh yeah. but the other interesting one was the epic yeah. little fiasco where they owe or they're paying like it's like a 500 million dollar fine for basically predatory practices going after kids yeah. and that vicious you know, Brad, cycle when it comes to being a predator it's like riding a bike you know like it's hard not to just keep going back to the well i guess mm -hmm. um yeah well that's you know i mean yeah <laughs> so uh i hope um the world turns its attention to some oh. of the bigger players in the industry while they're doing that but cool. uh yeah Hold on one second, because as I noted, I dropped my wife's car off. The dealership's now calling. Hold on one second, please. <laughs> uh, anyways, I don't even know where we were because that Amazon Epic, yeah, antitrust, blah blah blah. blah, blah the blah. Amazon stuff is only legally binding in the EU, of course. So right. Amazon is free to illegally abuse the uh, private data from its uh, third-party sellers to. Enter new markets, see what's popular, and then make one of their own, which they will then promote ahead of the third-party sellers. Uh, classic, classic, you know, monopoly abuse. Um, but you know, whatever. We'll we'll get to it. We're a little slow here. We're still we're still working through some other things here in the United States. Well, we've we've got priorities. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll we'll get there. there. We'll get, we'll get there. there. It's yeah. it's coming mm -hmm. right after the app stores and the. Payment yeah. platforms and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it should be right there at the. It's right there. It should be right in the same 
tier <laughs> of abuse complaints. I don't know. Uh, geez, isn't there a playbook for this stuff? We know how this works. Can't, yeah. can't you just point to stuff. You like look. It's not like uh, you know. Remember the thing about pornography? I can't describe it, but I know it when I see it. Mm-hmm. I, I can describe it, and like it's right there. <laughs> you know, like it's easy. To, it's easy to describe. It's not hard to describe. I don't know. Yes, it. Yeah. Yeah, it actually, kind of is. I mean, it's, it's... <laughs> it really is. It's super easy. It's not a complex topic, you know. <sighs> Well, that's that. I don't know. John Carmack left Meta. Know. He's been bouncing around a lot. What's it like? Well, that? not really. I mean, the how thing long it, was the, he at Meta? Te, uh, eight years, I think it was. Oh, so that's uh, longer than I thought, maybe. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to remember, this guy co-founded a software company, ran it mm-hmm. until he decided that. Well, he, and then he, he sold the company, became part of Bethesda. So actually, I guess technically speaking, I'd have to look that one up. I don't remember how long Id or he was at Id at Bethesda, but you know, uh, obviously, guy, uh, billionaire, genius, uh, all the game engines, all the work he did. So he was kind of his independent thing that did whatever he wanted. And then at Bethesda, the reason he left was because he thought VR was important, and they did not. And so he said, "Well, I'm going to go do it on my own then." And he went to Oculus, and I think it was within the year they were bought by what was then Facebook. Mm-hmm. I didn't think he would stay there. But I think the reason he did was because he felt very strongly about VR and he felt like these guys had the best chance to make it happen. Yeah. And uh, he's, by the way, probably right about that. Um, But what he saw there was an incredible inefficiency at every level and many, many decisions where he would bump heads with people and be overridden by the, well, probably by Zuckerberg, I don't know. And then two years would go by and they'd be like, oh, you were right. Let's just flip it back to the way you wanted to do it. And it's like, you know, you can only do so many of those before. Mm -hmm. You got to listen to the guy. When you got a genius on the team, I don't know, maybe listen to him proven record of success um and this guy you know for anyone who knows the guy if you've read the books whatever uh like i said genius and the type of guy who was all about efficiency in every part of his life right and so he would kind of wring performance out of pc hardware that had no business doing anything and turn these things into game machines somehow i mean he was a you know he he would he had great efficiencies you know and uh that's not what he saw at meta and um that's a, he just couldn't stand it anymore, you know? Yep. So I think, I believe he's focusing on AI now, which is kind of mm-hmm. interesting. Like um, pure AI, it seemed like. But there was a great interview with him fairly recently. I, I didn't like the interview, but it's on the web. It's it's a it's a multi-hour, it's hours long. And he actually talked about, he said, well, you know, one of the things I've never done that I would actually get into and could get into uh, would be OS development. And it, I wonder if at some point he doesn't get involved at that level somehow, you know, somewhere. Um, and I think we can all pick the company we choose for him to go to to fix things, but, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, probably not, probably not. Probably. Mm-hmm. Atari. Uh, <laughs> Atari's having some problems too, Sega. by the way. But yes, Sega? Uh, not... No. <laughs> Sega, yeah. <laughs> Poor Sega. <clears throat> they tried. Mm. Anyways, well, I mean, that's kind of all that's floating around. There's not too much else, really. We'll be back tomorrow. Probably not... I don't know Thursday I guess I don't know and then Friday definitely not because that's Christmas. You're just mailing it in now. Are we taking next week off? Of course. We, why works? would yeah. we buck an annual tradition? Of, <laughs> okay, I just unless to something happens, right? Yeah. So just so you know, the Monday after Christmas, the day after Christmas, I will be sitting here with my headphones on, waiting for you to call, and then at about ten past nine, I'll be like, "Oh right," because that's that's unless something works. happens, then we can you know fire up. Actually, mm-hmm. I can't say this too loud. Part of next week, I'll be in Chicago. Uh, oh. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. for you're gonna be mm-hmm. you're gonna be very jealous of this Paul Throat, oh, and I mean okay. super jealous. Part of my kids, okay. part of my I'm, and I'm intentionally not saying this too, like I don't think she's awake, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is there's a Harry Potter thing in Chicago oh. next week, and so so we okay. So how jealous are you? A, one to ten, one to ten. I, well, I'll, this will inform you how jealous I am. So. We were looking for a movie to watch last time. My mm-hmm. daughter's home. We were looking at kind of, I don't remember the movie, but I was going through the actors. Oh, it was my, my wife's been wanting to watch this movie called Love Actually, right? And every time I read the description, I'm like, there's no way I'm watching this movie. Mm-hmm. But then I saw it on a list of like best Christmas movies. And I'm like, I didn't think it was a Christmas movie. So I'm like, well, I'm like, look this thing up again. So she looks it up and she's reading the characters that are, and it's like Hugh, not Hugh Jackman, Hugh, <laughs> the other Hugh, the British Hugh, whatever his name is. But anyway, one of the actors was Alan Rickman. And I'm like, Alan Rickman, really? And I'm like, this must be an older movie because I know he's passed away. 
And then my daughter says, you mean Snape? I think I'm hoping I'm getting that right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I said, I'm sorry. I was like, what did you say? And she said, Snape. And I'm like, Snape? What's a Snape? And my wife looks at me. She's like, you know, from like Harry Potter. And I'm like, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen those movies. I'm like, I had no idea. Snape. I'm like, he's the bad guy from Die Hard. <laughs> like, that's how you know him. Right? He would, <laughs> like, not Snape. Also Snape. true. Anyway, that's my level of. I mean, they're pretty Harry good. Potter, I don't know. So uh, where, I'm sure they're fine. Yeah. Through, As I said of the books, uh -huh. when they became a phenomenon, these books written for children that adults were reading mm -hmm. back in the late 90s or whenever that was, I said, you know, I, I enjoyed this these books the first time they came out back when they were called The Chronicles of Narnia. Yeah, I mean, it's sort of them. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't, I don't really need to read them again. I, I will tell you, uh, for better or for worse, they have done phenomenal things for my daughter's reading ability because she's so, reading... I mean, she's way ahead because she's so invested in these books that right. she just keeps reading them. So it's. I think that's beautiful. And actually, to be fair, I did say this at the time. And it's interesting because it's so much worse now than it was whenever those books were new, mm -hmm. late, late 90s, probably early 2000s. I said, at least people are reading. Yeah. You know, um, I've been a lifelong reader. I feel very strongly about reading. And um, the fact that it makes your daughter want to read is is perfect and it's perfect so that's great yeah the question becomes now what comes after that because she's in she's on the last book i mean obviously she goes right to game of thrones i mean it's it's just a natural step <laughs> well i was no, thinking I maybe lord of the rings maybe that would do her i don't know yeah I, start, I mean start with the hobbit you know hobbit's a, ch a children's story it's if anything the hobbit is probably a little more infantile is not the right word but childish i would imagine yeah. than harry potter i think harry potter Probably escalates a little bit as they get older. Yeah, no, it definitely it definitely yeah. does. Mm. Um, yeah, the kids know. are growing up faster in the books than she is. <laughs> That's right, right. right. It, okay, there that. you go. So, anyways, we'll be back tomorrow, probably. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I got to sacrifice another mouse.